Either way. Here is... Your body killed cancer five minutes ago. I love immune system type uh, videos. They're very cool. Yeah, Zelda is, is pretty awesome. I like it. Even though I've only played a couple games. I really loved Breath of the Wild. I thought it was amazing. Such a good game. Alright, let's go. Somewhere in your body, your immune system just quietly killed one of your own cells, stopping it from becoming cancer and saving your life. <clears throat> it does that all the time. The vast majority of cancer cells you develop will be killed without you ever noticing, mm -hmm. which is an incredibly hard job because of what cancer cells are. Yeah. Parts of yourself that start to behave as individuals even if it hurts you. Yeah. What is cancer and how does your body kill it all the time? Well, yeah, cancer cells, it's pretty much like there's a mutation in the cell, and then when that cell reproduces, it's, like, bad for you, in layman's terms. <laughs> it's not always caught. Cancer is when corrupted cells multiply uncontrollably. It can emerge from basically every type of cell in your body, so there's not just a single type of cancer, but hundreds. Fun. Some grow slowly, others are aggressive, some can be treated effectively, others are deadly. In a sense, a cell that becomes cancer turns into something ancient and something new. Over billions of years, evolution has molded cells to survive and thrive in a hostile environment, Six fighting four. for space and resources. Until a new and exciting way of life emerged, cooperation a division of labor that allowed cells to specialize and become more successful Yo, together. Hello. But cooperation requires sacrifices. For a multicellular being to stay healthy, the well-being of the collective has to matter more than the survival of the individual cell. Cancer cells stop being part of the collective and become individuals again. Your body can handle a few rogue cells, but some cancer cells divide again and again, becoming a sort of new organism within you taking resources you need to survive, competing for the space you inhabit, destroying the organs they were part of in the process. Despite the harm they cause, cancer cells are not evil. They don't want to hurt you. They don't want anything. They just want to Cells live. are protein robots that just follow their programming, which unfortunately has been corrupted. The soul of the cell. In a nutshell, your like cells have a nucleus filled with DNA. It consists of genes, instructions for how to build proteins and when to make each one. These building instructions are copied and transferred to ribosomes where they're used to make proteins. What kind of proteins your cells make determine what they can do. The important thing here is that a corrupt gene means you get a corrupt protein, which will get important later. Your DNA- Why are all these looking like penises? Were they all just giggling? In the, in the animation room about that? Or or am I just a sicko? DNA gets a tiny bit corrupted. It mutates tens of thousands of times each day. Most of the time without any special cause, just by being alive. Yeah, that's Almost all of these mutations are fixed very quickly or are not problematic. Still, over time, as your cells make copies of themselves, damage is accumulating. Imagine having to make copies from copies from copies for yep. decades. Maybe one day a hair got on the scanner or a corner got frayed. Each new mistake becomes part of the new copies and all the copies that follow. You can increase DNA damage by doing things like smoking, drinking alcohol, by being obese, breathing in asbestos, by not using sunscreen or contracting a virus like HPV. But the simplest way to damage DNA and get... So... Essentially, you just have to become a neat, and you never leave your house. You just, you just eat, uh, you eat the bugs, and you're good. There you go. Eat the bugs, stay home. Fuck yeah. Get cancer is to be alive long enough. For many cancer cases, there is no cause other than bad luck. The damage that leads to cancer. We are simplifying, but roughly there are three categories of genes that need to be corrupted so cancer can arise. 
The first key mutation is in the appropriately named tumor suppressor genes, or TSGs. These genes are a bunch of things. For one, they produce control mechanisms that continuously scan your DNA for mistakes and copying errors and fix them right away. And then they keep normal cells from multiplying recklessly. If TSGs become damaged, your cells basically forget how to repair themselves and can reproduce unchecked. The second crucial mutation can happen in your oncogenes. When oncogenes are turned on, the cell is told to multiply rapidly. They were super active when you were inside your mother's womb. To turn a single original cell into trillions in months, it needs to divide and grow rapidly. These rapid growth genes are turned off when there's enough of you. When your oncogenes get corrupted, they basically turn on again. Mine started, my, mine gave up pretty quick because I didn't end up very tall. True, Twitter is totally full of cancer. Somehow still not as bad as Reddit though. The third crucial mutation is in your cell's suicide switch. Most cells are constantly recycled and refreshed. When cells amass too much damage, they usually notice, and special genes trigger a controlled suicide called apoptosis. If the genes that control this process get damaged, cells are free to live on despite being dangerously corrupted. So, if a cell becomes unable to fix the mistakes in its genetic code, loses the ability to destroy itself when it notices the damage, and begins to grow rapidly without restraint, it turns into a young cancer cell. These cells have to be killed as quickly as possible. While they are bad at this stage, they are still pretty weak and easy to kill. But if they continue to mutate and increase in number, they can learn to avoid your defenses and become a real threat. At any moment of your life, your immune system is hunting these cells. But how do you identify and kill corrupted cells that seem indistinguishable from healthy ones? How to find cancer? Well, here we come back to the proteins your cells produce and the story they tell. So if, for example, your oncogenes switch back on, they make oncogene proteins. Your immune system knows that they should not be present if you're an adult. So to know which cells are corrupt and which are healthy, your immune system needs to know what proteins they're making inside. To solve this, evolution came up with MHC class 1 molecules, a sort of display window that makes cells transparent. Cells constantly take little samples of the proteins they make and put them into thousands of these MHC molecules to showcase what they're doing. That's actually the is It's actually kind of cute. I don't know why, but I feel it's just it's it's kind of adorable just like this is what I'm making. Is it good enough? I don't know. <laughs> For some reason that just makes it adorable to me. Constantly refreshed, always giving an up-to-date picture. There's a whole library of proteins that are highly dangerous and should not be made by healthy cells, and your immune system has them all on file. It has billions of specialized cells called T cells made to recognize specific proteins. If a T cell sees a forbidden protein in an MHC display window, it knows that the cell is corrupted and kills it immediately. But there's a flaw in this system. What if a cancer cell mutates and finds a way to circumvent this process? All it needs to do is to stop making MHC class 1 molecules and boom, it's invisible. Without display windows, the immune system is blind and can't identify cancer anymore. Sneaky. Fortunately, evolution found an ingenious solution. The natural killer cell. A judge, jury and executioner. Hell yeah. The killer. Dread. At this very second, hundreds of millions of natural killer cells are patrolling your body looking for cells that have already turned into cancer or are corrupted by a virus. Natural killer cells go from cell to cell to check for one thing. <clears throat> Does a cell have MHC class 1 molecules? Does it have a display window? And is it doing its duty of showing off what's going on inside itself? This is so amazing because it covers all of your bases. While T cells look for the presence of the unexpected, something that should not be here, natural killer cells look for the absence of the expected, the absence of something that should be here. The logic is, if a cell does not have display windows, it wants to hide something. And a cell that hides something must be killed. What makes the natural killer cell even more metal is that it's always in murder mode. It patrols your body, checking cell after cell with the intention of killing it. Your healthy cells have to convince it that they should not die today. And a way to do that is to have MHC class 1 molecules. So, in summary, almost all young cancer cells you will ever develop in your life will be killed by your immune system. Okay, 
But if your body is this prepared, why do we still get cancer? Well, sometimes cancer cells mutate more and get much better at fighting back. Cancer is a story of an arms race. An arms race that we will win eventually, maybe with the help of natural killer cells. Right now, a number of therapies are beginning to show amazing promise from cancer-fighting vaccines to engineered T-cells and even natural killer cells. We'll look at these therapies in future videos. That is so, so cool. So the war is not won yet, but we are on to cancer and eventually it will be eliminated once and for all. Maybe sooner than we think. This video was made possible that in part so by direct cool, viewer though. support and in part through a grant by Gates Ventures. Thanks a lot for their support and stay tuned for part two. Please check out our source document for more background and in-depth information. That's pretty gosh darn stellar. Not gonna lie. That's pretty cool. It's really cool learning about our bodies. I We've spoken about this in, in a previous Kurtz Gazat video that we watched, but um, I really think it's interesting that we kind of live like like I feel like my body isn't just like me you know like I just so happen to be hosting an ecosystem and I have no control over it I can control what I consume the exercise that I do uh, things that'll help it but ultimately we just all are walking talking ecosystems we're just really advanced minerals it's so neat though. I love learning about the human body. There's just so much going on inside of us at any given time. I'm the fa yeah, yeah. I'm like the CEO that's like up here, kind of off in up in the clouds doing whatever, not really knowing what's going on down there. Like I can put down, I can be like, hey, all right, today we're eating chicken and salad. There you go. Congratulations. You get that. I like I, I allocate resources, but it doesn't mean my body is going to do exactly what I want it to do. Because, you know, some days I just I, I get bad bathroom trips. There you go. I can't always help that. Some days I have a lot of pain. That's something that I can't really control. Some days uh, I feel fantastic and I feel like I could run for five million miles. Wendigoon video about the worst death ever. Basically about a guy that got blasted with like 10 times the fatal dose of radiation but lived 10 times longer than the longest person before him. Oh. 10 times longer than the longest person before him? Workers would be happy if you'd feed them chicken and salad maybe. I would suggest it but it's pretty graphic. I mean I might like... I might be interested in checking that out later, but what do you mean? Li oh, oh, like lived l 10 times longer than the person that got like irradiated before? Like that? That's, that's horrible. You know, another thing about the human body. Humans will survive the most insane shit and humans will also die from the simplest shit. Oh, yeah, I, I kind of figured that's what you meant, Locke. Oh my god, that's so brutal. I feel really bad for that guy. That sucks. Oof. Honestly, at that point, like, if it's inevitable, just put him down. You could you could totally die from an infected toenail, and you could survive fall in ten stories. Eight. He was kept alive. Wait, wasn't that? Weren't they like doing experiments on him to see how his body was like reacting to it, and they were basically just using him as like a science experiment? Was it that Japanese guy? Or am I misremembering that? It, well, okay, I've heard of it before. Yeah, I've heard of that before. Oh my god, that's horrifying. 83 days. Oh my god, that poor guy. What the fuck? That's disgusting. I don't like that. I don't like that one bit. 
they weren't explicitly experimenting they weren't explicitly experimenting on him yeah okay <laughs> okay yeah i feel like if it's like an inevitability and they they give consent you should you should be able to go for the big sleep <laughs>